The Patterns of Perception project was really born out of curiosity, working together with dancing, the English National Ballet, drawing, St. Rosa Martin's textile design and UCL Neuroscience Department. And so what the project was setting out to do was really trying to um, improve the perception of what living with Parkinson's is. Uh, many people are aware of individuals with the condition but really have quite a catastrophic view of what the illness is, whereas actually the lived experience is very different and people uh, have this condition for very long periods of time. It took me about three months after I was officially diagnosed to get my head around it. And then I just said to my GP, I said, I'm not going to let this bugger beat me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we could do then is start with our exercise with Kate and Nathan. Taking a little bit the kind of fear of the white canvas in front of you, that was one of my personal key ideas, so that you have a yellow piece of paper that you work all together and it does become a little bit less precious, it doesn't become highbrow art school. What we really wanted to see was their own responses, their own handwriting and not anything from somebody else. I care for patients who have Parkinson's disease and I run a research programme where our real focus is to look at how people with Parkinson's differ from each other. So when people drew spirals in the project, <laughs> we, Nathan played some very some beautiful music while they were drawing the spirals and many people commented that their spirals were much smoother than they would be when, right. when they were drawing them in clinic. Wow. So there's so much that we don't understand yet about how music and how movement interacts with degenerative disease. <laughs> the idea of doing a drawing with looking at the person and not looking down at the end of your pencil I found remarkably challenging. I thought, how can you do this? Because I would assume you sort of look and sort of hold an image in your head and then put it down at the end of your pencil. And I was quite pleasantly surprised when I sort of got the eyes and the nose faintly in proportion to each other. And it was just amazing to see what other people achieved. kind of looking at Akram Khan's Giselle and the characters in that, we're going to create some of our own things and you're all going to create a little bit yourself. So just like you created your own artwork last, last week, we're going to create some dance this week. So one of the things that English National Ballet had to bear in mind is that in our Dance for Parkinson's classes, we don't focus on the fact that people have Parkinson's. So it was interesting to kind of be part of a project that's exploring that, but still maintaining the artistic um, kind of integrity that all of our classes try and offer. <laughs> We're bringing in some of um, the visual ideas that we worked with in Anne's session with the concept of how we started off with the spiralling um, into, into, the, into the dance session. One of the teachers actually once said to me, did you do ballet when you were younger? And I said, well, not for, no, for about a term. And then I fell over and the teacher laughed at me and that was the end of it. And so when she said, I thought you did it because you were so graceful, I mean, that was, it was like having a bouquet of roses. It was just lovely. It made me feel that I'm, you know, using my body and this was another way of using my brain and my body. And finish with a big, nice bow. And big round of applause, everybody. Well done. <laughs> We were given a book, uh, a sketchbook, and asked to complete a, a page for every day. I did short pieces, often with words in them, illustrating different aspects of the Parkinsonian experience. So for example, my wife finds my facial immobility difficult to deal with. So I, used, I illustrated that by clipping in some photographs of the Easter Island statues, which are nothing if not immobile. Several times in the, in the drawings I've um, mentioned the fact that um, in, speak, in speaking, if I have to think about something when I'm saying it, then I'll, I'll hesitate and stutter and so on. I can get through the sentence, but um, it's quite difficult because I have to keep on going between cognitive mode and speaking mode. But uh, if, if I want to recite a poem, 
or sing a song, it's absolutely fluent. I began researching this project maybe two or three years ago. And so we wanted to connect processes between dance, music and art. And because of Giselle production that the English National Ballet were working on, they had these sticks that they were using in the choreography. And I immediately thought we could draw with these sticks to make it less precious of the mark. You do things big, you start to think big and your ideas kind of expand. I felt like a follower and then when I got the brush in my hand or I was holding the brush like a broomstick, then suddenly I had that power to put in there what I wanted to do, but also to make it fit in with what others wanted. So it was kind of individual and team challenge. It's been such a positive experience being part of this project. Um, I've learned so much from the artists and how they brought out the narrative and the story from the people who took part. I think the uh, amazing thing about the package and the workshops we did is that it wasn't in a medical environment and it wasn't in a hospital. I think reaching out and actually going into the communities and setting up programs like this closer to where people live and forming uh, these uh, groups and links uh, with, between other individuals uh, in similar circumstances is really where the, uh, the important things are. It would be great to have more time in everything. So it feels very much like we're kind of scraping the surface of what we could, what we could do with the project. It gave me the feeling that actually, um, yeah, we can tell a story, we can show people, and there is so much that we can do um, that we don't need to sort of feel that just because you've been diagnosed with Parkinson's, it's the end of the world, because it's not.